Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video which is setting up and configuring your DualShock 4 or your PlayStation 4 or 5 controller to use with Flight Simulator 2020 with full vibration support as well. There's a bit of a caveat here is that I'm using the Steam version of Flight Simulator 2020. It may work with the Xbox Store or Windows Store version as well. I can't confirm that because I don't own that version and I'm not about to go through the pain of reinstalling that version either. It may work with that. But the, the way I'm going to show you how to set this up is through the Steam version. So keep that in mind. So with that out of the way, let's get on with this video. Okay, so the first thing you want to do, regardless of whether you're using the Steam version of Flight Simulator 2020 or the Windows Store version or the Xbox Store version, you want to head to this website, I'll link it in the description below, for the DS4 Windows program and choose your appropriate version. I'm using 64-bit uh, Windows, of course. So I downloaded the zip file and extracted it and it came in a folder like this with all these programs in. So you would run the DS4 Windows program. Now when you first run it, it will ask you to install .NET 5.0. It will download automatically. Once it's downloaded, just run this file and then this program should be up to date. Now, with this program, I've changed pretty much nothing. The only thing I've changed is the light bar there. You can actually change, like use custom color and change it to whatever color you want. I've just changed the light bar so that it's showing like a yellow color. Everything else here, I've simply left as default. Now, there is another setting. If you're using, like I am, the Windows Store, uh, the Steam version, go to your Steam icon or Steam homepage. In this case, I go to my icon and click on right click and select settings. And under controller, general controller settings. Here, I've not changed, I've not ticked anything. In fact, I've unchecked a couple of these boxes. I don't know if that's really important, but it doesn't seem to affect it and it works for me. If you click on here, it's actually picked it up as an Xbox 360 controller. That's okay. It may say PS4 controller for you. What you want to do there is click on Preferences and ensure that Rumble is on. And if it's not, it should be on by default. But just make sure it's on and submit. I won't because it's on. Everything else there is pretty much it's bog standard. The only other thing I did, and I'm not sure how this affects this whole process of getting a uh, vibration, is click on guide button chord configuration and browse configs down here. When this comes up, browse configs and the community uh, it's seems to change each time but I just clicked one of these one of the highest vaulted let's click this one because I don't think it really matters uh, but I'm just putting this in this video just in case and apply configuration there you go it's just applied a sort of basic uh, button cord configuration and then you can come out of that anything else here you don't need to worry about if you not worry about vibration then you don't need to download this ds4 windows if you're using the steam version steam picks up the ds4 controller automatically it seems if you want vibration though the only way i found to make it work is to run this program have it running in the background and also as I just showed you there, ensure that your vibration is turned on here, which mine is. So let's come out of that. With all that set up, that's all pretty straightforward. 
But with all that set up, like I said, with the DS4 Windows program, the only thing I change is the colour bar. I've left everything else as default here. With all that done, let's minimise all that, keep that uh, DS4 Windows program running in the background, and launch Flight Simulator 2020. I'll come back when it's, when it's uh, fully started. Okay, so with Flight Simulator 2020 up and running, I've just gone to Options and Control. If you've controls, if you've followed my steps previously, you should see something like this, either default or Xbox One showing up on the controllers. If you move your left stick, so your left stick here on the DS4, it'll be down here. But if you move that left and right and up and down, you can see your ailerons and elevator works fine. On these sort of default, there's no sensitivity setting at all, so it's all at zero sensitivity. I'll come to sensitivities later. I've got the DS4 windows running in the background. That's quite important if you want vibration uh, working on your DS4 DualShock 4 controller. The way I found to get vibration working is to go to... Let's see if I can find it. X input, oh, X input gamepad alt. Now this has various controls set up and goodness knows what. Some of them I don't like. It's even got some sensitivity in your left and right. So your ailerons and pitch movement, your elevators. It's even put some sensitivity in there for you too. Not quite enough for me, but it's something at least. A lot of these buttons and configurations like increase and decrease throttle, it's on the bumper buttons. This is the Xbox controller, but if you can imagine a DS4 controller here, it doesn't show up here unfortunately. But the bumper buttons will be increasing and decreasing your throttle. I didn't like that, so I've changed it to a profile which is my controller profile in use. Basically, I've got different buttons for increase and decrease throttle and the bumper buttons and now my uh, pitch trim. And goodness knows what. The way to change that, I'll do a couple of them just to show you. So let's go back to that X input controller because this is what I changed in there. I just went to increase throttle. I want my... It's my triangle button. It's showing the Y here, but on the DualShock 4, it's the triangle button to increase throttle. I clicked in that increase throttle box. Clicked in this box here and pressed my triangle button. And that's now my increased throttle. Click on validate. And then you would have to rename the controller and goodness knows what. But that's how I did it. And then anything else, if I clicked in search by input there and clicked my triangle button again, anything that's set up there, so for example these things here, I can delete them. But you will have to save it to a new profile name once you start messing about with changing buttons. Delete anything that's assigned to it that you don't want, want assigned to it apart from increased throttle and goodness knows what. Let's go to my profile and use. I've got lots of videos about setting up buttons and how to clear assignments so go and view them if you want a more detailed guide on that. But basically I've just set up various different buttons for increased throttle, like I said, I've got my triangle and decreased circle. I've just changed a few things around. And increase and decrease flaps, I've got on my D-pad here, on my DualShock 4. That's to the left, of course, on the DualShock 4. That's here on the DualShock 4. But increase and decrease flaps are put on this D-pad. And a few other changes. You can change it. I'm not going to go through it step by step for you. Because you may want different assignments. But you can change these to your heart's content. If you're okay with the default assignments. So that will be on this profile here. Go to X input don't forget. If you're okay with the default assignments then you don't need to change any of them. I just wanted to change them. I didn't like some of them. Let's go now go to sensitivity. Like I said on the default X input gamepad. 
it's got minus 40 sensitivity. That's not quite enough for me. So what I did, I go to my controller profile and use, this is the one I used to fly with my DualShock 4. I changed my sensitivity settings to minus 70 on both the plus and minus sensitivities on the left and right movements, your ailerons, and elevator up and down. Both of them, all these four settings here, I've changed to minus sensitivity of minus 70. I've left the extremity dead zones alone and the reactivity. Mess around with that. This feels right for me. If it doesn't for you, you can change those sensitivity settings. But that feels right with the DualShock 4 for me. With the rudder, left and right trigger buttons. That's the left trigger button. And the right trigger button is down here. Unfortunately, with, like with the Xbox One video I released some time ago. I'll link it in the top right for you. You can't change sensitivity on this. You can try. So let's change sensitivity to minus 58 just as an example. I'll just change it there. Press done. Apply and save. If I go back to sensitivity now, you will see it's gone back to to zero sensitivity on the rudder controls left and right rudder so even if you try and change these it doesn't apply so let's try and change that again apply and save go back to sensitivity it doesn't apply unfortunately so rudder is only useful on the ground <laughs> you're not going to find this useful in the air if you like to use rudder when flying you're best buying a set of rudder pedals. I'll link another video I did on rudder pedals in the top right there. You're best buying a set of rudder pedals or using the keyboard or something like that. The trigger buttons don't seem to work well on the DualShock 4 or Xbox One. Only on the ground. So keep that in mind. So with all that set, set up. Let's now go. And do a flight. Let's fly from London City Airport as usual with my videos. And let's go fly. Okay, so we're at London City Airport using my DualShock 4. I'm using my right stick to look around. I can click the right stick and it'll go back to center view, which is quite handy. Let's look to our left. Increase my flaps using my D-pad on the DualShock 4. Moving it up. And that seems to increase my flaps. Move it down, we'll decrease. That's all fine. I've got a, a two button setup. It's actually the X on the DualShock 4. Hold that and left click your left stick. That will release my parking brake. Use my triangle to throttle up. I can feel the vibration of the DualShock 4 as, as it's trundling across the ground, across the runway. So that's working. The rudder works as well. On the ground it's fine. And it self-centers by the way. If I move my view down you can see the rudder self-centering as well. But it's only useful on the ground. Keep that in mind. It's hopeless in the air. Pull back on my left stick. And it's feels nice when I'm climbing I'll use my left bumper button now to for my pitch trim and my right to pitch down decrease my throttle slightly trim out a little bit using my bumper buttons move left and right and as you can see it's all working quite nicely using my right stick to look around right click in the right stick to go back to center view as you can see, no problem at all. Try and use a bit of rudder there and it's nah, it's not useful in the air because you can't change the sensitivities. Slightly useful. I'm just holding the trigger in slightly. You can just about get away with it, but get a set of rudder pedals basically if you want to use rudder would be my uh, recommendation. Other than that though, the flight controls seem to work quite nicely on those sensitivity settings and you do get vibration. And if I press the share button, I believe I can go external, use the right stick to look around as well, which is nice. 
So there you go, that's how I've got my DualShock 4 set up with Flight Simulator 2020 and I'm able to get vibration with it as well. Let me know your thoughts in the video. Has this been useful to you? Have you got any concerns? Leave your comments below. Give the video a like if it's been helpful to you. Subscribe for more, plenty more Flight Simulator 2020 videos on the way and I'll see you soon.